Welcome to Proportions in Triangles. I'm Mr. Pi, the math guy. I'm going to be your host today, and what we're going to be taking a look at is the side splitter theorem, a corollary related to the th side splitter theorem, plus we're going to be taking a look at the triangle angle bisector theorem. So let's get this geometry party started. Here we have the side splitter theorem. So let's take a look at it. If a line is parallel to one side of a triangle and intersects the other two sides, then it divides those sides proportionally. This is going to be a word you're going to be seeing a lot. You probably have seen a lot, especially if you're my student. We've been working with proportions within similar triangles. And in this case, we have a triangle embedded inside another triangle. And this side, we can see that RS is marked parallel to XY. So we're going to write this down. If segment RS, or even line, is parallel to segment XY, and that's the first part of this. If a line is parallel to one side of a triangle and intersects the other two sides, so here we can see line RS, or segment RS, intersects the two sides of a triangle and is parallel to the third side. And what it does is intersects the sides, then it divides those sides proportionally. So these sides can form a proportion. Their lengths, that is, can form a proportion. So in this case, the proportion that we can conclude is this. XR, X to R over RQ is equal to the length of YS over SQ. So what the side splitter theorem says, if a line intersects two sides of a triangle and is parallel to the third side, then these lengths are proportional. We're going to use that to solve a problem coming up. In example 1T, we're going to be using the side splitter theorem. We're told to find y. So in this case, let's take a look at the diagram. Here we have a triangle. It should be obvious that segment NM is parallel to segment AB. Therefore, we can apply the side splitter theorem. And using the geometry to set this up, not 100% necessary, but to give you an idea, to relate it back to the theorem we just went over, we could say that uh, the length of segment BM over the length of segment MC is equal to the length of segment AN over the length of segment NC. So we substitute in what we have. BM is Y over the length of MC, that's 12. That is equal to AN, which is 6, over NC, which is 10. And we have to solve this, and this is a pretty easy proportion to solve. 10 times y is 10y. 12 times 6 is 72. And that would be because of the cross products property. Dividing each side by 10, we end up with y is equal to 7.2. And just in case, if you're taking a multiple choice test and the answer is given as a fraction or a mixed number, that wouldn't be. Uh, Five, that would be a seven. So that'd be seven and one fifth. So the length of segment BM is seven and one fifth or seven point two. Corollary to the side splitter theorem. If three parallel lines intersect two transversals, then the segments intercepted on the transversal, transversals are proportional. Here we have a diagram. Here are three parallel lines and they are intersected by two transversals. What we can conclude then is that these segments are going to be proportional such that A over B is going to be equal to C over D. We can see that proportion right here. A over B is equal to C over D. So the segments on the left are going to be 
forming a ratio being equal to the lengths of the segments on the right. That is the corollary to the side splitter theorem. Example 2t. Using the corollary to the side splitter theorem. The segments joining the sides of trapezoid RSTU are parallel to its bases. Find x and y. So, uh, since we have these parallel lines, and so happens that we have a trapezoid here, so we would be able to do some angle work if we wanted, but there's no need to. In this case, although these lines are parallel, we need to find x and y. So, I naturally like to start with x because that's alphabetical order. Do that work in red for x. And in this case, uh, the proportion I'm going to set up is 6 over x being equal to 5 over 12 and a half. So that would be 6 over x equal to 5 over 12 and a half, or 12.5. Using the cross products property, I'm going to multiply. 12.5 times 6 is 75. And x times 5 gives us 5x. Dividing each side of this by 5, using the division property of equality, and the symmetric property, so I'm going to put the x over here on the left-hand side. x is going to be equal to 15, because 75 divided by 5 is 15. So, I've calculated x is 15, and the interesting thing is that I need to know the value of x to find the value of y. Otherwise, I'd have a proportion. with two variables. I guess I could use 6 over 5 also, so I wouldn't really be stuck, but uh, it's going to be, I'm going to use the value of x here. I'm going to set up this proportion now for y, and I'll do that in blue. I'm going to set up the proportion 15 over 9 is equal to 12.5 over y. Using the cross products property, y times 15 is 15y. And 9 times 12.5 is 112.5. Dividing each side of this by 15. 15 is divided out, giving me y is equal to 7.5. So there's using the corollary to the side splitter theorem to find missing lengths. Triangle, angle, bisector theorem. If a ray bisects an angle of a triangle, then it divides the opposite side into two segments that are proportional to the other sides of the triangle. What you really need to understand here is that if a ray bisects an angle of a triangle, then that's right here. If a ray or a line segment bisects the angle of a triangle, then it divides the opposite side into two segments that are proportional to the other sides of the triangle. So these segments down here are going to be proportional to these segments or these sides of the triangle. So the segments formed by this ray are proportional to the sides of the triangle. So here we go. Let's take a look at this proportion. In this case, we have CD over DB. And that's going to be equal to CA over BA. We'll go through that again. It's CD, CD to length along the bottom and the, uh, over the other length along the bottom. And we have to match up here. It's the shared side here, the adjacent side, CA over BA. So when you go through that, just kind of touch the sides of the triangle here. CD over DB is equal to CA over BA. Kind of just go through that yourself a few times get used to visualizing what you need to understand about the triangle angle bisector theorem. Example 3t, 
we're going to be using the triangle angle bisector theorem to find the value of x. In this case, here's x, and you have to remember that this, since this segment bisects angle IGH, it's going to split this side of the triangle into two segments that are proportional to these sides. And specifically, the way we're going to think of this is x over 30 is going to be equal to 24 over 40. And I use these dots to indicate like when I would touch the paper. I actually, when I set these up to make sure I'm doing it right, I touch it with my pencil. So x over 30 is going to be equal to 24 over 40. So I'll set that proportion up. x over 30 is equal to 24 over 40. When I do the cross products property, 40 times x is 40x. And 30 times 24 is 720. Divide each side of this by 40. And that's using the division property of equality. x ends up being equal to 18. So here was using the triangle angle bisector theorem and its proportion to find the value of a missing length in a triangle.